Well, hi, hello, it's Sophie here and a warm welcome to today's video. Today I'm talking about how to make money with your art prints online. Now, I know the struggle can be if you create only originals, this can be a bit of a sporadic income and therefore creating what we call a second income stream by making prints of your originals can be a really great idea. I'm also aware that for those of you who perhaps already have prints made and they're sitting on your website and you're saying, I'm just not getting enough people to my website to see, let alone buy my prints, or I know I could make good sales, I'm just not quite sure how. So in today's video, I'm gonna share four steps that are essentials if you want to make money from your art prints online. So if you love the content that I share on these videos and on this channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. And of course, don't forget to give me the thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and share a comment in the comments below. All right, let's go ahead and get stuck in with step number one. Step number one is about getting a really high resolution, great digital image from your original artwork. So this might sound obvious, but sometimes I feel we can maybe be a little bit lazy and we just think, oh, okay, do you know what? This light will sort of do. I'll get my phone out and I'll take a photo. And I'm just gonna say, okay, rewind there a little bit. You've gotta decide what sort of size print you want to make. If you want to make a really large print, say A1 size, you're gonna need the biggest, biggest file you can possibly create on your, probably not on your phone, but it's likely to be on a 35 mil camera. If however, you just want to create small prints, you likely will get a fairly decent photo um, from your phone, especially if you've got the very latest smartphone. However, um, for the benefit of this video, I'm gonna suggest that the photos you create for prints are take on th taken on 35 mil cameras. Why? Because they create a higher resolution photo than you can get even with today's amazing iPhones. So if you haven't got that yourself, then it's time to hire a professional photographer and get some really great images of your work. I can promise you it's gonna be worth the investment. If it's really small, your work, then you can consider scanning it with a home scanner as long as you've got a good quality one, or you can take it to a local printer and they'll scan it for you. And then of course you need to think about the editing of the image, the color balance and so forth. If you're great with Photoshop, you can do that yourself. I used to love doing that. Being a Virgo, I used to get it absolutely spot on. <laughs> but if that's not your skill, you're gonna to want to outsource that too. So likely your photographer could do that for you. Or again, your other option is to take all your work to a printers where they can get great images and color balance the work for you. So probably it's gonna come down to time and budget as to what you're gonna do. But that's step one, get the high resolution photo of your image. Step number two, you're gonna decide on the product you're gonna create once you've got the image. It's sort of, we're gonna talk about three different types of prints here today. Number one, we're talking about print on demand. Now I'm creating another video for print on demand. So once that's created, I will add that to the description below and you can go ahead and watch that if you're interested to see how that works and how you can make money with print on demand. But essentially print on demand means you're gonna take that high resolution image, you're gonna upload it to a third party print on demand website where your customer can go and hit, I'd like that image please, on that sized canvas or that sized beautiful paper. And then the print on demand company is going to take the payment and mail out or produce and mail out the product to the customer. So you don't have to do anything. The downside, you'll end up with a really small cut of the profit. So we need to just bear that in mind. The second way you can make your print, of course you can make it at home. So there's a few things here. One is you will need to invest in a really, really good quality printer. There'll be some suggestions in the description below. And you want to make sure it's one of those that has multiple ink cartridges. Up to that, I think there's a maximum of 12, all the different tones. So there will be a bit of investment with the good quality ink as well. And of course you'll want only archival paper. So I used to make digital prints from home and yet there was some setup costs and ongoing costs, but the rest of the money is yours. 
So it's kind of going to depend. You could print every time you get an order or you could print a few so you've got a bit of stock waiting at home. It's going to depend again on your business strategy here. And last one, the third type of print we're talking about today, of course, is the high quality gicle print. Now, likely you're going to get that made at a local printer because we're talking about larger than that A3 format. We're talking about perhaps a, a larger product or a much better quality product. What does gicle mean? It's French for spray. It's about the, the way the digital print, the way the the um, ink is sprayed, it's a particular, particular type of ink, plus a high quality printer on high quality archival paper with a high resolution image. It's all of the different components put together that create the best possible quality print. And that's how it becomes known as a gicle print. So the next choice you're gonna make, you've got two further choices to make with your product. One is fairly easy, so let's talk about that first. Will you offer your product as is? Will you offer it mounted or mounted and framed? Now that's gonna depend. If you're mailing them, my suggestion is you don't frame them unless you've just got small work. Because most people want to choose their own frames. A lot of people quite like to buy them mounted, ready to go. That's gonna be your decision. You could also offer that as a service. Hey, please buy it, just the product or the product mounted, and then you could offer perhaps a link to a framer or framing service. Lots of different things you could do. The next and last decision under the product that you need to make, is this going to do an open run or are you going to create a limited run? So are you going to do so that your print, your Im every image, you can have as many prints as you like. Obviously, if you're going to do digital prints or print on demand, that kind of means that's going to be open edition. But if you've invested for really high quality gicle prints, there's something magical special about that. You might decide to make each of those a limited run and therefore limited edition prints. You'll need to hand sign those, number those. I always used to put the title down the bottom as well. How many should you do? That's gonna be up to you. 10, 20, 25, 50, 100. The 100 is quite a big, um, limited edition, unless you're a really well-established artist, I would keep the, the numbers lower. It also means, of course, you can, you can price much higher. Typically, a gicle print, if you make the print the same size as the original, you can charge around a third of the price of the original. So that's, you know, that all of these comes down to your business strategy. All right, so that's step two. Step three, looking at setting up for selling. How are you actually going to sell them? The first thing you've got to decide, of course, is the pricing structure. So how are you going to price them? Have you got a really good pricing structure? I've got videos on pricing as well, which I'll link to in the description below. So number one, think about your pricing structure. Number two, think about where you're going to be selling it from. You're going to upload it to your own website. Are you going to use a third party gallery site? Obviously, if you're doing print on demand, you'll likely be just uploading and using those. Although you could do the drop shipping, but I'm gonna talk about that in the other video, the print on demand video. So really you're gonna think about, if you're gonna use, for example, your own website, you want to upload multiple images so people can really see how the print looks. Maybe even a, a, one of those lovely photos where the print is up on the wall somewhere in a room setting. You might also want to write a lovely full description about the print and the story behind the original, the price, the postage and packaging. So your PMP policy. So if you've got a large print and it's got to be rolled in a tube or it's mounted and it's got to actually be packaged, somebody wants to buy it from the other side of the world, what's your policy? How long will it take to be delivered? Do you have a returns policy? If somebody gets the work and they don't like it, is there a seven days, 14 day return policy, or you don't do returns? All of this needs to be stated where someone's going to buy the product. So there's a few things to consider there. All right, so that's really step three. So step four, the final step, of course, is the one you all ask about. How do we actually make the sales? So we've created the print. We created the photograph, we created the print, we decided the product, we've uploaded it, it's on the sales platform. Ah, how do we get people to look at it? Well, there's one thing I want you to think about, and that is about creating your artist's mailing list. 
Everything boils down to the ease with which you can communicate with your would-be customers via your mailing list. So let's think about this. So you've got really two options here. One is you build a list of people who are interested in hearing more about you. So you have their permission to email them. They've said, I'm interested in your work, I'd like to hear more. So you send them out regular emails, and then one day you send them out an email that says, hey, I've just put prints on my, on my website, go here to check out, I've got a special discount voucher, or however you're going to do it. Or you could say, oh no, I don't want to build a mailing list. And then every time you want to market something, you're going to have to go back to the beginning and you're putting it out, you're putting your feelers out to a cold audience, the people who don't know about you. So I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and build a mailing list. Not sure how to do that? I've got a longer and little sort of mini training. It's about 40, 45 minutes, I think, which I did originally on Facebook. It's now here on YouTube and I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's the five simple steps to building your artist mailing list. So you can watch that and get a bit more of an idea of what you need to be doing there. So all your marketing that you're going to be doing is about building the mailing list so that you can then communicate with those customers via email. So two types of sort of uh, platforms come to mind as great strategies for marketing prints online, and that is Instagram and Pinterest. Why Pinterest? It's a search and discover platform, right? It's where people are looking for things, they're looking for inspiration, they're looking for products, they're looking for things to buy. They're already there on the platform. So if you create a Pinterest account and one of your boards is around your prints, you can also, of course, do the rich pins, which means that somebody can click on it and it takes them straight to your website where they can buy the print. You can use ads and promote it as well once you know you've perhaps got, you've got a few designs that you know are more popular than the others, then you could consider doing some promotional um, and posting as well. And then of course we've got Instagram. So on Instagram, again, very brand driven, image driven, you can of course set up for product tagging on there too and link your Instagram with your sales platform online as well, especially if you're doing it yourself. Perhaps you're on Shopify or you've got a WooCommerce site or you're even using something like Etsy. These all connect. You can tag your product and someone can do the same on Instagram. Click through and buy on your site. So you're going to be needing to do a bit of social media. You're going to need to be doing a bit of list building and a bit of keeping in touch via email. Now I can promise you, you do all of that and you will create the sales. But if all you do is put them up on your website, hope and pray that someone's going to come and look, it's going to be quite a disappointing experience. So I'm really hoping that you are super excited by this. Let me know in the comments below if you already sell prints, you want to sell prints, and if so, what type of prints you sell. Also, if you have any questions about how to further market and get more people to your site, then check out more videos on this channel, but also ask your specific questions. I love hearing from you. All right, so you might also like to watch these videos next. So go ahead and click on the images, jump to those videos, and thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget, if you love what you've seen today, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified, and I'll see you on another video.